you do have responsibilities in a marriage, in a partnership, and you have responsibilities within your business. All right. And you got to own it. <laughs> you got to own it. Welcome to Coach Magic, the show for the woman who is all in on creating a life, business, and family that's beyond her wildest dreams. I'm Jenny Fennig, and I am so excited to help you get confident, focused, and paid. Let's rewrite the rules and get moving in the direction of your deepest desires. Ready, set, go. Hey, 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 everyone. I'm so excited to be with you today. I am broadcasting this episode of Coach Magic Live. And oh my goodness, the time has come. I'm going to check this to make sure everything looks good on my end. And then we will get started. It does. Hooray. Okay. All right. So here we go. Uh, The theme for this conversation today is all in what marriage has taught me about business. I wanted to do this live because it just felt very celebratory and very exciting and very fresh. And that's one of the things that marriage has taught me about business, one of the many things. So here's the, here's the, the vibe. So Stephen and I are celebrating 16 years of marriage today. Hooray. Yay. We met in 2003. We got engaged in 2004. We got married in 2005. Honestly, it feels like the time has flown. When we met, I was working at a public relations agency in New York City. I was flying around the world for a press tour with a celebrity athlete on behalf of a pharmaceutical company. It actually sounds a lot cooler than it was. I soon realized the life I wanted with Steven wasn't conducive to the life I was living as a public relations executive. So Eventually, I changed jobs to something that offered me better hours and better money. We got married. Life was good. As we contemplated having children, I knew another career change was in order. This change would have me leaving the corporate world behind and choosing the life of a business owner and coach with a lot more control over my schedule, projects, and income. That change happened in 2007 when I quit my six-figure job and embarked on a new path, one that I am still on today. It was scary yet liberating, like a lot of change is. Do you have that in your life when you go through change, when you realize it can feel terrifying, but on the other side of that fear is liberation. It's absolutely freedom. Steven has been a huge support during my career evolution. He's never been threatened by my ambition or my ability to earn well or my desire to earn well. He listens to me vent when things are hard and trust me, things do get hard. He is an excellent sounding board and our marriage has helped me be a stronger businesswoman. And my business has helped me grow in my marriage. The key has been being all in, being all in, all in, all in. And since I'm passionate about helping you have a life, business, and family that's beyond your wildest dreams, I am sharing six lessons marriage has taught me about business. And I'm going to go through them one by one with you, and we are going to do this thing. We are going to do this thing. Okay. And it was really interesting as I was deciding like how I wanted to commemorate this, this moment, because it it is a moment and I'm proud of it. Uh, This, this message came through. I saw the links between marriage and business and I thought, well, this is an interesting way to serve. This is an interesting way to put something out there for you that will be helpful. And so here we go. The first lesson, lesson number one, and there are many, okay, there are many, many, many lessons, but I'm going to distill uh, the lessons that I feel most relevant right now into six. So the first one today is respect the partnership and make it your own. So marriage is absolutely a partnership and business, even if you're not quote in an official partnership with someone else, right? I feel that I am in a partnership with my business, okay? And so I see this as a really strong lesson. So within the marriage context, this is absolutely a partnership. And when I look to see how Stephen and I do things, we very much are partners. And 
what I've learned, and this was not something that I necessarily knew going in, and I had a really, you know, interesting road with, with marriage. My parents got divorced when I was very young. I was very nervous about being married. I didn't know if I was going to be good at it. I, I was just scared. I was scared that I would like mess it up and, you know, all the things. And over time, you know, I've just, I've just learned, I've learned, I've learned by, by just showing up as all of myself. And I've really seen the power of a partnership. And within the context of my marriage, Stephen and I just really respect the partnership. And there's sometimes that, um, oh, hi, Jean, it's awesome to have you here. Yeah. So there's sometimes when one person is maybe like taking more of the load in one area because life. And there's other times when, when someone else takes over in this other piece. And I'm going to talk more about that in a moment, but really respect this as a partnership. There's so much respect that needs to go into this, into this institution, into your decision, into your commitment, because you've made a commitment and it's beautiful to be able to commit to something and watch what happens when you do. And when I say make it your own, you doesn't have to look like so-and-so's marriage or so-and-so's business. If you try to do that, it's just not going to feel good. Um, there's that whole saying, compare, don't, you know, when you compare, you often move into despair. So don't compare and despair. I don't base my marriage on anyone else's marriage. I certainly am inspired by certain people's marriages, like my in-laws, we're actually visiting right now because today is my mother-in-law's birthday. We got married on my mother-in-law's birthday. Happy birthday to Doris. Um, but they inspire me very much with their marriage. They've been married for more than 60 years, <laughs> which is just mind blowing to me. It's so cool. And I just adore them. I, so I take cues from their marriage. I take cues from other people's marriages, but I don't compare my marriage to theirs. I may be inspired by some things that they do or how they you know, talk to each other, treat each other, just some of the things that they do. Uh, but Stephen and I have made this our own. And the same has gone for my business. I make it my own. I honestly don't care what other coaches are doing out there. I don't care if this person's doing this or this person is doing that. Maybe I'm inspired by what they're doing, but I'm not trying to be them. I'm not trying to make my business the way that their business is because mine needs to be the way that mine is. It's a direct reflection of how I'm meant to serve, how I'm meant to show up in this life. And so that is lesson number one, respect the partnership, make it your own. Lesson number two is own your responsibilities and strengths. Own your responsibilities and strengths. So you do have responsibilities in a marriage, in a partnership. And you have responsibilities within your business, all right? And you got to own it. <laughs> you got to own it. This has been a big lesson where Steve and I have seen where I might thrive in a particular area, like this is my strength zone and this other area is his strength zone. And so we just let each other operate in our strength zones, all right? He, I am very clear that I... I don't like taking out the garbage. Okay. I'm just using that as an example. Like I'm not the one who's taking it up to the street. That is all him. And we've had to really work. I'm using that as an example. If you like doing garbage, awesome. But I, that's not my thing. That's not my thing. I want him to own that and own that and own that. And I own, you know, lots of other areas, but that's going to be his thing. That is his responsibility. He needs to remember when it goes out into the, the street because the garbage is, you know, has pickup day. And that's not my responsibility to remember that for him. And it's not my responsibility to do it. I have other things that I'm responsible for. Okay. And those really operate in our strength zones. And I love the fact that I'm like, you're the garbage guy. Like that is totally your thing. And so to really like build him up around that and to know like he's going to own that, I'm going to own other things. This is so true in your business. You've got to own whatever you're responsible for and have that tied into what your strengths are, what your zone of genius is, okay? And it's not like one uh, thing is better than another, is, is like more important than another. It just means that there's a lot of things that need to happen within a marriage. There's a lot of things that need to happen within your business. And you need to ensure that everyone's clear on who's responsible for what. And as much as you can operate in your zone of genius, the better. You feel good about it. You feel um, like you are helping to contribute to the health of the entity, 
right? Whether it be your marriage or whether it be your business and you just keep owning those responsibilities and celebrating what they are and make them as fun as you can, make them as you as you can, make them as interesting as you can. This is also a great lesson, you know, for those of you who have children like we do, we have three kids that you're gonna own their responsibilities and you're really gonna celebrate what those strengths are, okay? And, you know, I see how much this helps within my business and I know that I'm planting seeds. We are planting seeds for our children as they journey forward in their lives that they are gonna be responsible for what they're responsible for and that we celebrate that. We're not here to shirk off all responsibility. Like that's just not how life works, okay? Third lesson, be willing to make change be willing to make change. So, I mean, <laughs> Steve and I are, we're still the same people, you know, when we got married all those years ago, again, we got married in 2005, like he's still the man I married and I'm still the, the woman he married, but we have evolved a lot. And we've evolved in terms of where we live geographically. We used to live in New York City. That's where we met. We now live in the Berkshires of Western Massachusetts. Our lives are very different. Very, very different. I was working a corporate life when we met. I'm now an entrepreneur. I work from home for myself. I coach incredible people in my programs and I create content. You know, I love what I do. He's evolved quite a bit in his work. And now we have kids, you know, that was that we didn't even know that we were going to have kids when we first got together. You know, we just thought we'll figure it out. We really enjoyed each other. And we, we knew that we would just figure out each step, you know, each phase. And we've been willing to make those changes as they've come up. As you see, we need to make a pivot here. We need to make a shift. We will do that. And I'm not going to say that it's been the easiest decision or that we know immediately and we change the next day. It's simply about knowing that change is part of life and change is part of your business as well. You're going to uh, realize that the way you used to do it, you don't wanna do it like that anymore. That this old, this program that you've been running for a long time, it's complete. Or that you've been you know, saying this one thing for so long and you don't wanna say that anymore. You're ready to do it over here. Or you're ready to change your business model or you're ready to change the place that you're doing business. Maybe you had been set up in this one city and you realize you don't want to live in a city anymore. You want to live over here. That's honestly something that happened for me when we were still living in New York. We had just had Sean. He was a year old and we knew we were ready for, I knew very much we were ready for a change. He knew too. We had to get there together. And I knew that my business, it just, it wasn't meant to, to grow in New York City. A lot of people, it would be the perfect spot for them. But for me, I was complete there and I couldn't really grow in the corner of my bedroom that I was working and we needed to have more space. I wanted to be more connected to nature. I needed a different place to plant myself and bloom. And so we made that shift. We moved to the country and I love it. And my business has evolved right along with me. And so if you're feeling that nudge right now to make some shifts, make some changes, give yourself space around that, give yourself grace around that. That's just what it is. That's what it is. And you're allowed. You're allowed. Absolutely. The key is to really be in that relationship, whether it's change within your relationship, you know, your marriage or your partnership, whatever you're in right now, um, or change within your business. I believe that this is something that we can have conversation with. Like I really have conversation with my work. I'm in like communion with my work. And I see this as a, a divine sacred partnership and that we get to do this together, okay? The fourth lesson is give the magic room to breathe. Give the magic room to breathe. All right, so Steve and I give each other space to be who we are. Uh, we're not clingy. We're not jealous people. Um, we don't give each other reasons to be like that. You know, we, we have a lot of trust built into our marriage. I'm very grateful for that. Um, again, I had to do a lot of work on this. I have gone through a tremendous amount of therapy. I need to be real with you. Uh, I did this when we were 
dating. Um, I've continued on with just getting help from various healers and helpers so that I could, you know, really take care of my side of the street and uh, know that I could really trust our relationship and trust myself in relationship. And as, as a result, you know, we are able to be who we are and we give each other love around that. We give each other respect around that. And that has been a key to our success. We are able to really respect the institution of marriage and we respect that we are individuals. So we give that magic room to breathe. And, um, you know, I remember distinctly the year I was turning 40, which was in 2017, I knew that I had an opportunity to follow a dream and to go to India, which had been something that had been on my heart for 10 years. And I needed to make a decision or give myself permission to do something that I know Steve would not decide to do. Like he wouldn't go away for two weeks from our family, like on if he didn't have to. <laughs> If there was a work thing that came up and he needed to do that, he wouldn't want to, but he would do it because he really doesn't like being away from home or being away from us um, really ever. Like that's just, he loves being around and that's just what he, that's his, that's his vibe. I love being around too, but I, I like to get out and travel and do some things that I know that I'll be back and it's all good. And that's a piece of my work and that's a piece of my journey and, and it's all good. And we have that, that respect across the board. But for me, when that opportunity to come to, to go to India came through, it was really a two-week commitment to go over there and, and, and learn about Ayurveda and go deeper into, you know, the culture of India and just follow my passion of yoga and, and go deeper into my training and my studies. And it was an incredible thing. It was like I manifested it exactly as it showed up and with one of my dear friends and Again, I knew that my husband, he would have zero desire to do that for himself. He wouldn't want to go with me because India is not on his list of places he desires to go. It was my dream. And he supported me. He backed me. And I went. And that was something that we just do a really great job across the board um, is that we give each other space to breathe. We give our, our relationship room to breathe. And that keeps the magic alive. And the same is true in your business. You need to give that magic room to breathe. Don't crush your days with so many things that are scheduled. Um, don't, don't, uh, don't doubt that magic. Don't doubt that if you, you know, take some time and that you don't have, you know, your days like back to back to back to back to back schedule, which I see happens for some people. They are scared to have space in there. But the creativity happens within the spaciousness, all right? This is how your energy goes to a whole nother level. This is something that I've been playing with for a long time now, and it is incredible, incredible, incredible. So give that magic room to breathe. Trust that there's something else that wants to come through you. There's the next level of your expression, and you need to give that expression space and trust and uh, room to present itself to you. Okay. And it's going to blow you away. It's really, really awesome. The fifth lesson here that marriage has taught me about business is to play the long game, play the long game. So when you know you're all in, when you know, this is your thing, <laughs> this is the thing you don't get tripped up on all the, you know, the day to day that can very easily trip you up. I'm not saying that you don't concern yourself with what needs to happen each day and that you don't make intelligent moves to help, you know, get you in the position that you want to be in or keep you in that position. But what marriage has taught me about this long game concept is that you know, Steve and I are all in and we've made this decision, we've made this commitment and we don't think it's like a sure thing. We don't just take that for granted. We show up in the marriage and um, we really communicate our needs. And, and anytime things get into, they get broken because they will, is like, we know how to repair. We know how to repair. We know how to talk things through. We know how to find our way back to each other, back on that path. 
And because we know we're playing this long game, we can make plans for decades ahead um, in terms of this is where we're heading. This is where we're heading as a family. This is where we're heading as a couple. This is where um, this is where we want to go. And so there's this feeling of peace. There's this feeling of comfort. There's this feeling of we've got this. We have each other's backs. Let's not stress about stupid crap <laughs> that that takes your eye off that prize. Okay, we make moves that support us for the long haul. And this is something that you can play with in your business as well. When it comes to tools that you need to invest in, trainings that you want to invest in, you know, technology that is going to help move you into the next realm of your contribution and your income, the team that you need to support you. If you're only making decisions for like today, you're going to miss out on that, on that, that bigger scheme of things. And so play that long game, make those decisions that are going to take you to where you want to be. You know, we do this in my business just recently, we've invested in a new technology and it's cost, you know, it requires resources, time, money, team. And when I say this isn't like something that needs to be there, you know, in place next month, I know that we've got runway. I know that this is going to take us into where we're going next. And I don't need to worry that, oh no, we incurred all these expenses this month. This is bad. It's like, no, this is, this is what happens when you're playing the long game. This is what happens when you know re, how you want to serve your clients. This is what happens when you know you're all in. This is your thing. This is your thing and you're doing it, you're doing it, you're doing it, and you're making smart decisions. And the sixth and final lesson, the sixth and final lesson I'll share with you today is to have as much fun as you can, okay? Have as much fun as you can, I mean, why not? <laughs> why not laugh a lot? And if you're in a partnership, remember to laugh. And if you're not in a partnership, remember to laugh. Like laugh at yourself, laugh with each other, laugh, 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 because laughter helps so much. It really does. You can laugh in your business. You can have as much fun as you can within your work. I certainly do. I mean, anytime I'm creating something, I think about how can I make this as enjoyable as I can? What can I call this that I can really get behind? Like if you know my work, you know that I'm really into naming things. I love working with words. And so anything that I'll name my programs and the, the name of a podcast episode, uh, the name of this offering, that offering, whatever, I'm going to infuse fun into it. I'm going to infuse magic into it. I'm going to infuse myself into it because that's the most amazing thing I can do. That's my highest contribution I can make is to bring myself into anything that I do. All right. So I bring myself into my family into my marriage, into the relationship I have with myself. That's been an ongoing process for me is to become more of myself every single day. How can I become more of myself every single day? How can I be more of myself in, in my marriage? And how can I really be my best self? You know, and that's not saying that we have to be perfect. We're not going to be perfect in, in a marriage, in a friendship, in a whatever kind of relationship. And life is full of relationships. Like we can't go through this life. Well, I don't think I would want to go through this life without quality relationships. I don't need mass quantities of relationships. I really learned that. I'd rather have, you know, a smaller number of really, really amazing, deep, real relationships. But the key is, can you be yourself? And can you look at some of those blind spots? Can you look at where you need to clean something up, you know, where you can get strong in a particular area so that a relationship can thrive, you know, and that you can really move into that next realm. And let me tell you, fun can absolutely be a piece of this and fun will help your business grow. Fun will help you just have a lot, um, like more gas in the tank to be able to show up for what you're showing up for. 
what I see with a lot of my clients is they, they've forgotten that they're allowed to have fun and that they might have had, you know, something hard happen or a disappointment that occurs. And then they just go into like shutdown mode and they get frustrated and they think, oh, I'm not cut out for this. You know, you might have said that in a relationship, I'm not cut out for this or in your business, I'm not cut out for this. And you totally are when you are willing to design it so that it can be fun. It can be something that you want to do and that you look at this idea of you get to do this. You get to do this. This is a gift. This is a blessing. This is a privilege. This is an opportunity for you to be all that you came here to be. All right. So those are the six lessons that I have to share with you today. Again, I'll recap, respect the partnership, make it your own, own your responsibilities and strengths. That's number two. Number three, be willing to make change. Number four, give the magic room to breathe. Number five, play the long game. And number six, have as much fun as you can. I'm going to show you, this is something that we did in one of my recent programs. I am actually going to hop off and go lead a call for them. My amazing clients in Energy Queen. This is one of my new programs. I'm having the, uh, the best time lead it because what I do, I infused fun into this program. So we have these custom candles made from an awesome candle company called Salt and Sass Candle Company. You might not be able to see it on the side, but we had these, it's like our rally cry um, printed on the this label around what it is to be an energy queen. It says, here's to feeling good and doing good, to showing up and speaking up, to being confident, focused, and paid, to putting on your crown and letting the world know who you are. So this is how we infused fun. Well, into the program, you know, and I, I have this candle burning right now. And every time I look at it, I'm like, yeah, you know, I just believe in making your life as enjoyable as you can, making your work as enjoyable as you can. There's going to be hard moments, plenty of hard moments. I don't want to uh, gloss over that. There will be hard, there will be hard, but guess what? You can do hard things. You didn't come into this life because you thought everything was going to be easy, right? And I think, you know, just on the marriage point, um, before we go, sometimes you can have that um, delusion. <laughs> That's an illusion. If you, I remember growing up taking cues from like marriages I saw in movies or like celebrities and I've learned, yeah, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. You have got to find your own way with this. Figure out what is real for you, okay? Love this quote, uh, this passage from Hafiz. I'm gonna share this and then we'll wrap today. Even after all this time, the sun never says to the earth, you owe me. Look what happens with a love like that. It lights the whole sky. So thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Coach Magic. I have really, really enjoyed sharing these lessons with you about what marriage has taught me about business. My name is Jenny Fennig. I send you all the best and we will see each other again soon. Bye.